Assurance. Assurance. Amen. If, if you look in front of your uh, in front of your pews, you have a white uh, book. Uh, this is a songbook. If you get it, would you open to page uh, three forty-five? I hadn't noticed it, but if you look at the numbers three, four, five, <laughs> that is cute. Okay, so open it to three forty-five. And you, you're going to see that that's a song called Blessed Assurance. Amen. And, and uh, we're going to be talking about that. Assurance means being sure of something or someone. Amen. I'm sure you're all going to come to help clean the yard. <laughs> Amen. I'm sure that you're all going to come and clip trees and do all that. I'm sure that you're going to be here every Sunday. I'm sure that you're going to help out the church. I'm sure that we get up. How many of you got up this morning and went to your car and you said, Oh, please start, please start, please start? None of us. No. Amen. We go to the car, we put the key in, we start it up, we put it in drive, and we drive off to wherever we're going to go. The only time that we say, Oh, no, is when the car refuses to stop. Amen. But when it starts, that blessed that's assurance. Amen. Your car's gonna start. Amen. Your husband's gonna wake up next to you. Your your sons are gonna be in their rooms and and everything. That's assurance. Uh, you're gonna get a meal today. You know everybody's gonna get to eat today. Uh, you might have eaten breakfast. You're gonna eat lunch. You're gonna eat dinner. Those are all assurances. Amen. Those are sure things. The sun's going to come out. The rain's going to fall. The sun's going to come out. The moon's going to come out. There's going to be stars whether you see them or not. That's all assurances. God has given us a lot of assurance. But then he goes on and he says, Now what I want to do is I want to give you blessed assurance. Everybody say blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Now, you remember that I said that assurance is being sure of something or someone. Now, blessed assurance points to one person and one person only. And blessed assurance is being sure of God's promises. Amen. Pro uh, provision. Promises. Provision. Plan. And protection. Those four things. The Bible says, I, I know the plans I have for you. The Bible says, I, I shall provide all of your needs. Provision. The Lord said, I am your shield and your buckler. I will protect you. Amen. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that today. But let's go ahead and read this song. Uh, we're just going to read number one. If you look way on the top, it says, Blessed Assurance. Then you go down and it says number one, two, and three. We're just going to read number one. And I would like for all of us to read it because this is blessed assurance. You don't need to stand for this, but we're going to go ahead and read it. Amen. 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 And everybody said, I'm ready. I'm ready. Blessed, blessed assurance. assurance. Jesus, Jesus is mine. Is mine. Oh, what, oh, what a foretaste, foretaste of glory divine. Glory divine. Heir yeah. of salvation, salvation. purchase of God. God. Born, Born of his spirit, spirit. washed in his, his blood. blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Amen. Now, let, let's go over there real quick. Number, It's a blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. God is faithful. God is true. Amen. God does not lie and he keeps his promises. So it says, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Amen. 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 When I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he is mine. Amen. His benefits are mine. His blessings Amen. are mine. His house is mine. His father is my father. Amen. Amen. And then it says, oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. A foretaste means, oh, what's coming up. Amen. He said, I know that Jesus is mine, and I know there are good things coming my way because Jesus is mine. And then it goes, heir of salvation, purchased of God. I have received salvation because Jesus loves me, because God loves me. Amen. And then it goes on, he said, born of his spirit and washed in his blood. The Bible says that you must be born again. 
So you are born of the spirit. You were born of the flesh. Now you're born of the spirit. And then it goes on and it says, and I've been washed in his blood. Some people think that's too radical. Ugh, ugly blood. You know, without the blood of Jesus, you couldn't have Amen. salvation. Amen. I would rather have a, a bucket and buckets and buckets full of Jesus' blood than to have blood on my hands. Amen. Amen. Then it goes on and it said, this is my story. Amen. I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and this is my story. He is my Jesus. He is my glory divine. Amen. He is my purchase of salvation and I have been washed in his blood. Amen. This Amen. is my story. Praising my Savior all the all day long. long. Alicia was talking about it in her Bible study that, you know, well, we're, we're getting too, too comfortable being scared. You know, believe it or not, this, this uh, 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 two days ago, I wrote four sermons. Four sermons. The Lord told me, I want you to write this one. And I wrote it, and then he said, put it on the side. And I said, Lord, but that, he said, just put it on the side. And then I wrote another one, and I put it on the side. And, and I said, okay, Lord, I got it. And he said, now I want you to write one more. Yeah. I said, okay. And he Lord. said, now I want you to write the one you're going to preach this, uh, uh, this Sunday. And it's my assurance Amen. that I know who I am. I know what I can do, and I know what I'm willing to give to my children. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So blessed assurance, amen, praising my Jesus all the day long. This is my story, and this is my song. This is my story. So would you open your Bibles to 1 John, 1 John, amen. that's little John, we got John, which is the big John, then we got 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, so go to 1 John, chapter 5. Verses 10 through 13, through 15. We're going to go to 15, amen? Mm -hmm. First John. Now, you know, a lot of times we talk about bringing paper, bringing uh, things and writing notes and everything. And the reason we do that is we're not trying to be bossy. We're not trying to tell you what to do. But sometimes when I was a, 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 a very new Christian, I had just accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I would go to church and I would hear pastor preach and I would go home and I said, man, I wish I could remember what he said because that pertained to me. That was good for me. First John, Amen. chapter 5. First John, chapter 5, 10 through, through 15. And so I always thought to myself, I wish I knew, I wish I could remember what pastor said, because that pertained to me. I could use that. I could talk to God and say, God, this is what pastor said, and I need you to help me with it. Amen? Amen. But I didn't take notes, and then I got to a point where I said, you know what? I'll never go to church again without a pencil and paper. Amen. And I thank the Lord I never have. I've got stacks and stacks and stacks of every pastor that I went to that gave a sermon. I, I've got them, and I still go through them. I go and look it through them. I, I, I read what they said. <laughs> I look at what I'm going to be preaching and all that stuff. And uh, let me tell you, it is so helpful. Amen? But I also learned that I can't be going back to every pastor's <coughs> sermons, and I can't be going to every book and all that. So I, I keep in mind that the Bible says, I have written your word Amen. in my Amen. heart. Amen. I will remember it. I will meditate on it. Amen. Amen. I will not forget it because I know that once in a while I'm going to be out in the street. I'm going to be somewhere and I'm not going to have a Bible with me. I'm not going to have time to go get my Bible. And the, ba the devil is going to challenge me. The devil is going to come with something to say something, to, for, to, for me to do something, to say something, to act something. This morning, I was thinking about the person that reported us, and I, I don't know who it is, but it's okay. And I said, Lord, that person that reported us, I hope that you, and I stopped like that, and the Lord said, I hope you're praying for that person. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I hope you're doing something good for that person. And I said, but Lord, listen. And he said, yeah, I'm listening to your prayer for that person. Amen. 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 A lot of times we don't understand why we do things, but God does. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. And so we got blessed assurance and God said, you don't need to go after this person. You don't need to pray against this person. You don't need to say nothing about bad about this person. I will take care of it. And let me Amen. tell you, Amen. God will. Amen. God will. Yes, the Bible says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Praise God. You know what God is telling me? He said, you don't have to get your hands dirty. I'll do it for you. I got this. Amen. 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 Got you back. Just wash your hands and just have clean hands and a clean heart, and I will take care of the rest. Amen? Wow. So would you stand with me as we read 1 John chapter 5, verse 10 through 15. I want you to listen carefully because right now there is very little we can be sure of. I don't know if, if, if uh, Trump is going to win. I don't, win. I don't know if Harris is going to win. I don't know if, if somebody else is going to win. I don't know if they're going to blow up the United States because of what's going on. I don't know if they're going to kill them both. I'm gonna, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if the prices are going to go higher. I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford my gasoline. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. We, we are very unsure of things. And God says, but I am the God of assurance. Yes, yes. I am the God of assurance. You know, we have Geico, we have Allstate, we have we have uh, all these insurance companies, and, and and how many of you know that when you go put a claim, they forget that you're in their, your insurance company. Yeah. Something goes wrong and you say, you know what, I need to charge. Well, we need to look into it and we need to check it out and we need to do this. But you know what God said? He said, I am your blessed assurance whether you want it or not. Come on, amen. I am there for you whether you pay me or not. <laughs> I am there where you're behind on your payments or not. I'm, the, I'm there for you whether you pray to me or not. Amen. I was talking to a person the other day and I said, you know what, God loves you. And she said, well, I don't care about God. I don't believe in God. I don't care. And, and, and I said, but he cares about you. That's right. How do I know that? Because the Bible says he's blessed assurance in me. Let's, let's start on verse 10. Let's all read it together. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness, a testimony in him. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony God has given us concerning his son. The testimony is this. God gave to us eternal life and this life is in his son who has the son has the life and who doesn't have God's son doesn't have life. Amen. And then it goes on to verse 13. These things I have written to you who be believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Verse 14, this is the boldness, our blessed assurance, which we have towards Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He will listen to us. And if we know that He listens to us, whatever we ask, the blessed assurance, we know we have the petition we have asked Him for according to His will. Amen. You may be seated. I don't know if you know this or not. I don't know if you notice this or not. But there's a lot of promises there. There's a promise of having Jesus. There's a promise of having salvation. There's a promise of eternal life. And guess what? As Christians, that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for gold. We're not looking for silver. We're not looking for health. We're not looking for wealth. We're looking for the Son of Jesus Christ to be part of our family. Amen? Amen. Blessed assurance. Jesus said, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Jesus said, don't worry about anything. Amen. I am with you always, even to the end of time. Listen, the problem with us as Christians and the pe people of the world is that when we read this, we read it like this. Uh, Jesus said, do not be afraid. Okay. I am with you always until the end of time. Amen. But we forget that he said, do not worry about what? Anything. anything. Anything is anything bad. Anything is any curse. Any any a negative person. Any people. You know, uh, you let God take care of it. Amen? 
you're going to face on a daily basis, you're going to face ugly people, you're going to uh, uh, face uh, people that curse you, people that hate you, people that don't want nothing to do with you, you're going to meet people that, that are always planning against you, always doing this, always doing that, it's okay. It's okay. Jesus said, I have your blessed assurance. I am with you always, even to the end of time. Amen. So what is blessed assurance? Blessed assurance, okay, blessed assurance, I told you, assurance is being sure of someone or something, okay? Yes. You're sure that you got a job, you're sure that you got a, a paycheck, you're sure that HEB is going to start open and all that. But now we're talking about blessed assurance. These are promises that God has made that says you can be sure of this. Amen. I got your back. Praise Amen. Amen. I got Praise your God. back. You got nothing to worry about because I'm on the job. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. You, I don't know if you ever worked somewhere or if you were a boss somewhere and you had workers and you knew that there were two or three that you could really trust and then there were some that would go out and hide and, and they, they would come late and they would leave early and they would do all this and all that, amen? And God says, I'll never be late and I'll never leave early. I am your blessed assurance. Amen. I give you my blessed Thank promise you, that I will be with you always, always, even to the end of time. So, what does it mean? We have the assurance of heavenly provision. Yeah. Amen? We have the, uh, uh, the, the uh, promise of the assurance of heavenly provision. The Bible says, I shall provide all of your needs. How many? All, all. all of your needs. I will forgive what? All, all of your sins. Amen. So it says right here, we have the assurance of heavenly uh, provision. I shall provide all of your needs. We have the assurance of spiritual protection. Thank I you, am Jesus. your shield. I am Ooh. your protector. Thank you, Lord. I am your buckler. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you don't know what a buckler is in the old days, when somebody was going to go fight against somebody, they would bring and they would give him a big shield. You had your armor on. They would give you a shield. And then this person was made sure to go and make sure that your, your uh, armor wasn't going to fall off. You know, it would be ridiculous that you're out there fighting against somebody and then all of a sudden your helmet opens up and falls apart. Your 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 breastplate just falls. You know, your your pants fall mm -hmm. off and whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you're out there trying to hold your pants and trying to fight. Amen. So you had a buckler that came in and said, I'm going to tighten this and I'm going to make sure I'll double knot it. I'll do whatever it takes. But you're never going to have to worry about your armor being gone. Praise God. God said, put on the full armor of God, for I am your buckler, right. and I will make sure that that armor never, never falls off. Amen. How many of you know that the armor will never fall off, but it does come off? Come on. Amen. Come on. Sometimes as Christians, we say something, something interesting like this. You better pray that I don't forget I'm a Christian. Mm. You better pray that I don't go back to being the way I used to be. Uh-oh. You better pray that I don't think the way I used to think or talk the way I used to talk. Amen? That's when the armor comes off. Not because the buckler didn't put it on right, but because the owner decides to take it off. Backslash. But Backslash. how many of you know that every time you take that armor off, you're putting yourself in danger? Right. Amen. Right. So we have the assurance of spiritual protection. Put on the full armor of God and be strong and powerful in the power of God. Amen. You got the assurance of heavenly promises. Sometimes we need to go into the Bible. You know, get, get on your phone and, and, and Google how many promises are in the Bible. How many promises? I mean, and you will get hundreds and hundreds of promises. And you know the good thing about that is that they're made by God. They're made by Jesus. And all those promises will never be broken. Amen. God will be there. Oh, Pastor, I don't believe that because I've asked him for things. And I've, I, 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 I've asked him to do something. And I've asked him to give me something. He hasn't given it to me. Listen, if it's going to go against you, if it's going to hurt you, it's going to hurt somebody else. He's not going to do it. 
Remember it says, according to his will. Amen. So you have the assurance of heavenly promises. I go, Jesus said, I go to build a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you in heaven. And if I go to heaven, you can be assured that I'm coming back to get you and take you with me. That's blessed assurance. Amen. The problem is that a lot of things, times we think that we're going to get everything here on earth. The Bible said that God said this earth is going to be destroyed. Everything in it is going to be gone. Every person that has ever been born, even to the last person that's born before God destroys the world, everybody is going to be destroyed. And you're either going to come back as in, into eternal life or you're going to come back into eternal death. Death, eternal death is a separation from God. Complete separation from God, from God's promises, from God's assurances, from God's behavior, from God's protection. Uh, 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 but you know what? When you get eternal life, you are assured of full-time protection. You are uh, uh, assured of full-time provision. Uh, he's going to be with you always, even to the end of time. Amen? Amen. You're going to have the assurance of peace on earth. How many of you are tired of being tired and everything goes wrong? Every time I turn around, something goes wrong. Something breaks, something this, something that. I, I can't seem to get my head together at any time because something else goes wrong. And God said, if you belong to me, I will take care of these things. Amen? I got a red truck that I got about 10 years ago. And I've seen brand new trucks out in the freeway broken down. I've seen new trucks in my neighborhood broken down. And my truck, I go out there, put the key in, start it up, starts up, and I'm on my way. Amen? Mm -hmm. We got lawnmowers that are older than, than Methuselah and, and all that, and they still work. Amen? God is in the provision business, man. He is in the peace. You will have peace. Not the kind of peace you want. Not that nobody's ever going to make uh, your life miserable and, and bully you at school and all that. You know what? When people bully you at school, bully you out the street, uh, talk to God. Just tell that bully, listen, I'm not coming after you. My God is coming after you. Amen? I can tell you he can do it. So he's going to give you, he is giving you the assurance of peace on earth. Amen. Peace on earth. The Bible says, count it all joy. Count it what? All, all joy. joy. When you have all kinds of troubles and tribulations and everything in this world, because it's working for your good, it's giving you character, it's giving you strength, it's giving you the ability to continue to go on. You know, there's times that we go through things and we think, I'm not going to make it. Amen. I'm done. And God says, don't worry about it. Get up. Let me shake you off and let's go over this thing. Amen. Let's continue to do. Do you have God's assurance? Yes, sir. Are you assured by the world? Does the world say, hey, we're going to make you famous. We're going to make you rich. We're going to give you gold. We're going to give you silver. We're going to do all this for you. We're going to give you cars and houses with rooms and everything. Let me tell you, that's false assurance. Yep. Because everything that you have can be taken away. Amen. There's a verse in the Amen. Bible that says, if you are faithful to me, I will give you everything. I will provide everything. But if you are not mine and you don't care about me, even what you have, I will take yes, away. Lord, That's right. Amen. People are going through that every day. Man, they lose their house. They lose their car. And, oh, why? Why? That's God. Amen. <laughs> All he's trying to do is get your attention. Amen. How many of you know that uh, the only time that you're really going to look up is when you're so far down, there's nowhere else to look? Mm. You know, if you're up here, you can look up and you can look down. Now, if you're up here, you can look up and you can look down. If you're down here, you can look up and you can look down. But when you're down at the no, bottom, no, 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 when there is no, nothing no, else, no, there's nothing to no. hold on to and nothing, the only place you can look at, oh, God. <laughs> yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. My prayer is that every person that is hearing on, on YouTube, watching us here, that every person will one day just look up and say, God, what must I do? 
What must I do? Amen. Do you have the assurance of God or do you have false security? Amen. Elvis Presley had false security. Marilyn Monroe had false uh, security. Uh, Robin, uh, what was his name? Huh? Williams. William, William Robbins, you know, he had false security. All these guys, they thought that their money and their gold and their fame was going to last forever and forever and forever. And guess what happened? It didn't help. Mm -hmm. I pray that their assurance was on God. Amen. That's what I pray. Are you sure of anything? Are you sure of anything? Look at the way the world's going on now. Amen. You never know. You, you don't know whether it's going to get worse. You don't know. Uh, uh, you you kind of have an idea it's not going to get any better. I was telling Alicia that uh, uh, we, we wanted to buy a new car and we wanted to buy a new house, you know, kind of look around for a, a new car and a new house. We don't need it. We got a good car. We got a, a good house. But we wanted something a little bigger in the house. And we wanted something a little better in the car. And I told her, I said, well, uh, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to be looking for it. And she said, when are we going to go out and look? I said, as soon as Trump wins. <laughs> uh -uh. And she said, why? I said, because, hey, whether we want to believe it or not, whether I believe in, 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 in Harris or I believe in Trump, when we were with Trump, we were better off. Things weren't so expensive. We weren't getting so bad and everybody. And you said, but, but, but wait, Pastor, you can't talk about Trump. I'm not talking about Trump. I'm talking about my life. Amen? And I know that when Trump was president, we were better off. The prices weren't as high and everything. Now everything is three times what it goes for. Whoever heard of Huevo Rancheros for twelve ninety nine? Two eggs, beans. And a little bit of potatoes. Come Amen. On, come on. But anyway, I told her, I said, when Trump, when Trump wins uh, and he gets in and he brings the, the inflation down and he brings the prices down and, and everything starts to settle and everything, then we go look for a house. And then we'll go look. I'm not going to pay three times, you know, I'm not going to pay $3,000 uh, for something that is $1,000. i am not going to pay $50,000. Whoever thought about $54,000 car? Hey Amen. $54,000 car when you could get one. I was looking for, a, a, maybe about 10 years ago, I was looking for a new truck uh, before I got mine, and they, they were 7000 brand new. It was a little high for me at that time, but it was it, it, it was $7,000. Just a regular truck, you know, with the crank handles and all this stuff. <laughs> now you go get the one with the crank house and everything, and it costs you $24,000, $25,000. And if you want one with digital and with computers and all this stuff, you're going to pay fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 for a car. Come on. Uh, no warranty. Amen. It's time, it's time to buy a new pair of tennis shoes because I'm going to be wearing them out. Uh. Amen? But are you sure? Are you sure of anything? What must I do, Lord? What must I do? Right. Amen? Come on. What must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. But there are requirements to receiving the assurance. How many of you know that God has requirements? I know a lot of people right now are saying, see, I knew it. That was a catch to it. Well, let me put it this way. You go to H-E-B and you get food and everything. You don't just walk out, right? <laughs> the requirement is you go to H-E-B, you get what you want, they bring it all, and then before you leave, the requirement is you go to the cash register. Uh -huh. Now, I know some people say, well, you know, uh, I got away with not paying. I got it. It's going to cost you. But you go and you pay. You pay H-E-B. You pay them what they want for the stuff, and then you put in a little cart, and you put it in your car, and you take it home. Amen? You, you get a paycheck. How many of you get a paycheck? You get a paycheck, but what? The requirement is that you got to go to work. Amen? Amen? You go to work, and you do your job and everything at the, at the end of the month, at the end of the week, whenever you get paid, they come and they pay you. The problem is that if you miss a couple of days, the requirement is you miss a couple of days, we, we take a couple of bucks back. Amen? You get up in the morning and you're asleep in bed and you take a breath. The requirement is that you take a breath if you want to live. Amen? Amen. 
Everything has requirements. And God says, my requirements are easy. My requirements are not hard. Amen. Listen, I'm going to tell you, number one, requirement number one, to have the assurances of God. Amen? To have the assurance of God, the requirement number one is that you must believe in Jesus Christ. I don't have to. Try not believing in H-E-B. Try not believing in working. Mm. Try not believing in getting a paycheck. Try not believing in eating. Amen? <laughs> you know, you got to believe in something. You got to believe in something. So if you're going to believe, believe in God and His Word. God has so many promises, so many assurances that you got to believe. In verse 10 of what we read, it says, And he who believes in the Son of God, he who believes in the Son of God, gets a positive result. Amen. Amen. Listen, it said, And he who believes in the Son of God has the witness, the testimony, the proof in him that he who doesn't believe God has him as a liar, he don't get nothing. If you think God is a liar, you don't get nothing. You don't get no assurances. Okay, so the first one is you got to believe. You get a positive result. He has a witness and the testimony of him. You know about him and you know him. You get to have a relationship with God. Amen? Amen. And let me tell you, when you have a relationship with somebody, if it's a good relationship, you're going to get benefit. If it's a bad re relationship, you're going to get hurt. Amen? And God says, all I want to do is have a good relationship with you. Why? Because I love you. Amen? He who doesn't believe in God has a negative result. Is calling God a liar. Knows about him but doesn't know him. Amen. Amen? Yep. There's so many people around the world that know about God, but they don't have a relationship with God. Uh -huh. Amen? Uh -huh. I know about rockets. I know that rocket went to the moon and rocket, but I don't know anything about <coughs> how it got there. Amen? And a lot of people know about God, but they don't know how to have a relationship with God. And the first step to having a relationship with God is believing that there is a God. Amen. Amen. Believing that there is a God. He made him a liar because he had not believed in the testimony God has given us concerning his son. He has been condemned himself already. You condemn yourself already. Mm. You know, some people say, I don't like H-E-B, so they don't go to H-E-B. Maybe they like Walmart. Maybe they like somebody else. And, and anyway, and then when H-E-B has the very low prices in milk and eggs or whatever, they have specials, you know, you're losing them. Why? You're losing it because you don't believe in H-E-B, so you won't go to H-E-B. Mm. I believe in H-E-B. I believe in Walmart, and I look at their ads. I look in the phone. I look everywhere, and I see who has the, short, the, the uh, smallest price, and I go look for them. I believe in them. Amen? And I get their benefits. I get their benefits. Amen? So you need to do that too. But you have condemned yourself to live the kind of life that you have lived because you choose not to believe in God. Amen? Our part is to trust and believe in God. And that's not hard to do. You believe in dumb things. Amen? We believe in tarot cards. We believe in, 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 in uh Ouija boards, we believe in, in, in crystal balls and all that stuff. That, that, that's all. It has nothing to do with it. But you refuse to believe in God. Amen. 